The past few years have been very kind to us clone trooper wise. Straight from LEGO themselves and from custom manufacturers, there are so many legions and named clone troopers to pick from. So today I thought it would be fun to take a deep dive into every single named clone trooper done in LEGO so far. Now there has to be one major rule for this video where it's going to be four hours long. Only counting clone troopers done in the current LEGO 2020 style. So only official figures and custom manufacturers that match this style will be counted for this video. So that means no 2008 animated style and no Clone Army Customs. We'll save something like that for another time. But I'm gonna waste no time and get right into it. Kicking things off with the man himself, we have Captain Rex. This figure has his ups and downs. I think he has a pretty strong face print and the arm printing on him is really nice. But it's unfortunate that he has a printed on waist cape and this massive pauldron. But just swapping those things out makes this look like a really stellar figure. Following him is a custom Phase 2 Captain Rex. This one went for a more weathered approach, also features printed arms, and does not have any kind of printed on waist cape or even ammo pouch. Now, unlike the official LEGO one, this one does not have holes in the helmet so you can't put a rangefinder on him. But still a solid option if you're not a fan of the official LEGO one. Going right down the 501st list, we have Clone Trooper Jesse. This figure captures the likeness of Jesse's iconic Republic cog on his helmet and features some really nice arm printing. I also have him here in his ARC Trooper appearance. The ARC Trooper version of him is quite the looker and has plenty of detail on him. He's a great figure for those of you who are fans of the seventh season of the Clone Wars. Unfortunately, neither of these Jessies have printed faces, and you'll notice that to be a common trend with a lot of these custom clones. Next is Arc Trooper 5s. He features a custom pauldron piece that I'm personally not the biggest fan of, and he also has a brick-built Arc Trooper backpack. Like Rex, unfortunately, he has a printed on waist cape, but he does also feature a really nice face print. It captures the likeness of Fives very well and features his iconic tattoo on his forehead. Following him is a custom Arc Trooper Fives. This one has sharper helmet details than the official LEGO one and also features a face print. I'm not sure which face print I like better, this one or the official one, but I'll let you guys decide that down in the comments. He, like Custom Rex, does not feature the helmet with the holes, so he cannot have a rangefinder. Next is Fives' right-hand man, Arc Trooper Echo. Echo features a custom molded Phase 1.5 Arc Trooper helmet that does have holes on it, so you can add a rangefinder to him. He also has a Lego-styled handprint. Next is the longest living clone in Star Wars, Clone Trooper Kix. Kix is detailed very nicely and even features the detail including his medic emblem on his shoulder. Moving down the 501st line, we have Clone Trooper Dogma. This Dogma looks really nice and captures the likeness of the character very well. He features printed arms like many of these 501st clones. Following up Dogma is Patient Zero of the inhibitor chip himself, Tup. The character's iconic teardrop is nicely printed on his helmet and he also features uniquely printed arms. Following Tup is Clone Trooper Hardcase. Hardcase's particular details on his helmet were captured very well, and he has differently printed arms than the other 501st clones. These printed arms can be dual-purposed for a regular P2 grunt if you wanted to as well. To round off the Umbara boys, we have Sergeant Apo. This is a custom printed helmet on an official Lego body. The helmet is the only thing that is unique on Apo, so it works just fine on this figure. Getting into some Legends appearances for 501st clones, we have Apo in his Commander appearance. This one has a really nice custom waist cape and pauldron, and he features really nice additional details like the straps on his waist cape and pauldron, and some extra printing on his arms representing what I believe is an ammo pouch. Following him is another Legends 501st Commander, Commander Vil. Vil has similar details to Apo, but this time around he has a tan waist cape. To close things off with the 501st, we have Commander Bo. Bo is probably my favorite of the Legends 501st Commanders, just by appearance alone. I really like the use of the whole 501st helmet here to give him his macro binoculars, and he features additional detailing on his back that isn't seen on the other clone commanders. He, like the other ones though, shares the same really nice custom pauldron and waist cape. Next we have Captain Vaughn of the 332nd. This figure has his pros and cons, like the helmet not being entirely accurate, but he's a solid choice for those of you who are fans of the Season 7 Mandalore arc or the 332nd. Damn, the first half of that video was just 501st clones alone, but don't worry, we've got plenty more to come. Moving on to the Wolf Pack, we have Commander Wolf. He features a really nice waist cape, the Lego Hold helmet, which allows him to use a rangefinder, some really nice looking printed arms, and a really, really nice looking face print. 
The face print is double-sided for some reason if you choose to display him with or without the stubble. Not sure why that matters. Moving along with the wolf pack, we have Clone Trooper Boost. He's a nicely detailed figure that has some really nice looking arms. Following him up is Clone Trooper Sinker. He's probably the simplest designed one of the named wolf pack, but he still looks pretty good nonetheless. Lastly is Clone Trooper Comet. I think he's the most unique looking of the named wolf pack clones, and his helmet really shines representing that. He's a fantastic looking figure, and he shares the same arm prints as the other two. Up next is the Coruscant Guard with Commander Fox. This fox is not everyone's favorite, and I do understand why. The torso print is incorrect and gives off this pink look, and he unfortunately has the printed on waist cape. The helmet print though is fine, and he does feature a standard Lego clone trooper head. After him though, we have a stellar looking custom fox. This one has the correct torso print, a really nice looking waist cape, printed arms, and a stronger helmet print. This one's obviously the better of the two if you're a fan of Commander Fox. Following Fox, we have Commander Thyre's Legends appearance. He's a really nice looking addition to the Coruscant Guard. He also has printed arms, a nice looking black belt, straps that are supposed to be holding up his holsters, and that extra strap on his pauldron, like those other Legends 501st clones. Next is Commander Cody, and this is another solid figure. He features a weathered look to his armor and really strong printing on his helmet and torso. This is a fan favorite character and it's represented in LEGO very well. He also has a nice, uniquely printed face featuring Cody's iconic face scar. To give the other side of the coin, this is Commander Cody's Imperial appearance. Just like his Republic one, this is a strong looking figure and I'm a huge fan of this look for Cody. He's got the great outlook to his armor design and it's overall a very strong figure that unlike the Republic one, features arm printing. Keeping things along with the Bad Batch, we have Captain Grey. This figure captures his lime green Bad Batch appearance very well and I'm a big fan of this figure. What I'm a bigger fan of though, is his Commander Grey appearance from the Kanan comic. This is what Grey originally looked like before they decided to retcon his appearance for the Bad Batch. Why they did that, I have no idea, because this is a strong looking clone trooper. His unique design cues not seen on any other clone trooper, like this strap on his chest here, and his overall appearance is not very uniform with any of the other clone troopers, and I really like that. He is the same helmet design as the Bad Batch one, just in red. Following up Grey is another clone trooper from the Kanan comic that I believe was retcon for the Bad Batch, Captain Styles. Styles like Grey also looks very unique compared to other clone troopers and features this ammo pouch on his chest, very similar to the ones worn by the clone troopers in the Bad Batch. He's a great looking figure and a great companion to Commander Grey. Following those two is probably one of my favorite LEGO clone troopers so far, Commander Bly. This figure looks absolutely fantastic and captures all of the appropriate details of this clone trooper very well. It makes good use of the official LEGO hold helmet to give him his iconic macro binoculars. Absolutely no detail on this figure was spared. It's unfortunate he doesn't have a face print, but it's still probably the best custom LEGO clone trooper we've gotten so far. Next is a fan favorite from the Bad Batch, Captain Hauser. This figure captures the look of his likeness very well. It's unfortunate he can't have a face print for his unique looking face. I hear there is a new version of this figure coming out with a printed on pauldron and a cloth one to match the other styles that they do. Giving some more love to the Turquoise Clone Troopers, this is a fan-created clone trooper named Captain Tuck. This figure is so special in his own right, I gave him his own highlight video not too long ago. Be sure to check that one out to learn more about this clone trooper. In the meantime, he is a fantastically detailed clone trooper and a great centerpiece to any clone trooper collection. His likeness is captured very well, he has very nice looking printed arms, an official Lego helmet in this turquoise color, and a cloth waist cape. Like I said, huge fan of this guy. Up next is a clone trooper that briefly appeared in Season 6 of The Clone Wars, Commander Doom. He uses a LEGO hold helmet to take advantage of using the LEGO visor piece to keep everything cohesive with the way LEGO figures currently look. He's a very unique looking clone trooper compared to the standard clone trooper fare. He has printed arms like many of the other ones on this list. A really nice looking unique waist cape to him. It's another solid figure on the list. Following Doom is a named but what if version of this named clone trooper with a phase two Commander Pons. As most of you know, Pons died in the second season of the Clone Wars before the phase two armor came out. So this is a what if take on what he would have looked like had he survived later in the war. I think it's a pretty solid take on what this character would have looked like and it captures Pons likeness extremely well. Would love to see someone tackle a phase one version of him. This is another Legends clone trooper with Commander Hawk. 
He's ripped right from the pages of a Legends comic, and he's a pretty simple looking clone trooper, just with a red line running down his helmet, representing a scar that the character shares on his face. The story for this clone trooper is a good one, and I highly recommend looking into the comic that he appeared in. Following him is Commander Bakara, the ruthless leader of the Galactic Marines. He features a uniquely molded helmet that I've actually talked about on this channel before. A front and back torso print unique to him. If you're a fan of Revenge of the Sith, this is a no-brainer. Moving back to the Clone Wars, this is ARC Trooper Havoc from the Rancor Battalion. He features the same custom-molded Phase 1.5 helmet as ARC Trooper Echo, and he's probably my favorite looking of these guys right next to Blitz, who unfortunately has not been released yet. Following Havoc is ARC Trooper Hammer, also from the Rancor Battalion. He's one we've actually seen in LEGO before, way back in 2012. And this is of course him in a 2020 appearance. Saving these guys for last, we have the Bad Batch. First we have their leader, Hunter. This likeness of him is really strong and features his unique helmet very well. The only downside to him is he does have a printed on backpack. He also has a really nice looking double-sided face print, giving off two expressions. And this is Hunter's Phase 2 appearance. I'm a huge fan of how the Bad Batch looked in Season 2, and this custom representation of him is very strong. He unfortunately does not come with a helmet, but it features really nice details like the scarf he wears and the new holsters that he had on for those later seasons. Following Hunter is Tech. This figure is unfortunately a mixed bag. I feel like his face print, backpack, and the overall figure is really strong, but he has this really oversized helmet that if it were just a little smaller could look a little nicer. Besides the glaring issue with the helmet, he's an overall nice looking figure, and like Hunter, he has two facial expressions. And this is Tech in his Season 2 appearance. Of all of the Batchers from Season 2, Tech changes his armor the least, except for some minor color alterations, and this captures that very well. Following Tech is the brute of the Bad Batch himself, Wrecker. Like Hunter, this is a very solid looking figure. He makes good use of the Iron Man helmet to represent Wrecker's unique helmet. He uses the Lego chest armor piece to give the character some bulk, and he has a uniquely printed face print that I think represents Wrecker very well. And of course, I have Wrecker in his Season 2 appearance as well. Both are solid options depending on what version of Wrecker you're a fan of. Next is Echo. I think Echo overall looks really nice. He features a uniquely printed face, and the helmet captures his look very well. He unfortunately does not have a uniquely molded element for his hand, and he does suffer from having a printed on waist cape, something that can be fixed with a custom piece. And like the other ones, I have Echo in his Season 2 appearance as well. Again, giving you options depending on which version of the Bad Batch you like, unless you just want to collect them all. The last clone trooper we have in the list here is Crosshair. This is Crosshair in his Imperial appearance. Unfortunately, there is currently no 2020 styled Crosshair in his Clone Wars or latter half of the Bad Batch appearance yet. This Imperial version of him is okay. This was before the Lego Hold helmet existed, so he does not have a rangefinder. He has a printed on backpack but he has nice details like the pucks on his belt and the face print unique to him that represents his character very well. He's a solid figure, but he could look better. And whew, that's it. That is every single named clone trooper that we have seen so far. I did unfortunately have to omit Commander Gree just because I don't have that figure. Waxer and Boyle were also omitted, again, just because I don't have those. But we're just getting started here, and there are so many more named clone troopers to come. I can't wait to see that, and especially a lot of these in their Phase 1 appearances. It's an extremely exciting time as a LEGO fan to be a clone trooper fan that we're almost drowning in them. So I'm excited with what we've gotten so far, and I'm excited to see where it goes, because that's all I've got, and I'll see you guys in the next video.